Congratulations. I've finally done it. I've done what you've all wanted for so long. I've done the traditional Subaru thing, as you guys saw. I finally put unequal length headers on the WRX. On any Subaru. That's actually the first set of unequal length headers I've ever bought in my entire life. So I hope you're happy. It'll sound dope though. It'll sound real dope. I'm excited for it. It'll be cool. It'll be radical. It'll be like a goat screaming on the top of a mountain. Yelling at all of his little goat friends. Where I'm going with that. All right, you guys, so I've been taking a small break from doing installs and working on the cars and whatnot to do some, as you guys have seen, some videos on uh, other things that are not just build stuff because A, I've been waiting on parts to come in, and B, I didn't want to stand out in a cold garage forever. I went and got more propane for the heater, as I'm sure you can hear behind me, because that thing is screaming. But let me show you what we got. Let me show you what we're doing today and kind of where I want this video to go. I don't know if we're going to be able to get there today, but we're going to try it anyway. Hi, you guys. So with our EJ here, as you guys saw, I put a set of Tomei unequal length headers on this thing, all right? J a, first of all, Josh is going to yell at me for putting inefficiency on my car, but it'll sound cool. And it, honestly, this thing, I don't need to make a ton of power, but it's going to anyways. Uh, we got our ID 1700s in here, which also huge shout out to Rally Sport Direct once again for coming in clutch. Uh, they sent over a Tomei cat back which is another thing you guys have wanted me to put on the car forever. So this is the first Tomei series of stuff for exhaust components that I've ever put on my car. So we've got Tomei unequal length headers, Tomei cap, cap back. I will be fabricating and making uh, the rotated kit for the up pipe, which is what I want to do today is try to get at least the turbo mocked up with the up pipe and whatnot. Uh, we've got the Tile Q blow off valve, Tile Q wastegate. We got our fluid damper slapped on here because you guys know fluid dampers go on every single one of these engines. No exceptions, no questions asked. They go on there. So. What I kind of want to do today, I want to get the feed lines made for the fuel rail, so it'll just be a dash eight. We have dash eight feed, dash six return, so we'll probably just knock out the feed lines because those are just going to Y up here, and then we'll have our feed line coming up for the fuel filter underneath of the car, going to the fuel rails. And then before we get started on stuff, as you guys saw, we got all the wiring pretty much knocked out for our dual fuel pumps inside of our radium hanger right down in there. So I've got all the wires just feeding out right here for the two fuel pumps. There's one thing I'm waiting on clarity from from iWire, which is this guy right here. Um, this normally would go to the hob switch. I'm not running a hob switch for our two 450s in the fuel tank. Uh, I'm, I just want them on all the time like I have in the STI. I'm waiting on clarity on that one thing. Once we get that figured out, we can get that situation taken care of. But to start things off, let's get our Tomei up pipe slapped up on here on our beautiful EJ right here. We'll get it coming up and then we can kind of mock up where exactly we want the turbo to sit because I don't quite know yet. So that's something that we're gonna have to figure out. I'm also still waiting on valve buckets, but I don't know, let me play with this and kind of get it mocked up to see what I need to do to make the sink fit. I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store. I'm just gonna cut this Tomei up pipe right there. Uh, bend this out a little bit so that way it kind of comes this way and then we'll put our turbo right about here uh, I just I have to go buy a chop saw to be able to do that and then I can tack it all up well then I'll tape it up here I'll take it to the shop I'll tack it up I'll bring it back uh, we'll test fit with the tack welds on it and see where we are from there for the time being before I go to the hardware store I am gonna get that Tomei cat back thrown on so we'll open that real quick but I just want to show you guys like it's not it shouldn't be too bad like we just tack everything up make it all fit up nicely to our turbo down there we should be able to build an up pipe no problem i don't think the up pipe will be too bad i think it's gonna be the down pipe that's gonna suck but we'll get to that later for now let's get that on here to get that box the hell out of this garage i have never had a tow made before so i'm a little excited for this once again huge shout out to the guys over at rally sport like if you guys are looking for an exhaust or anything for your car hit them up use our discount code smedia save yourself a little bit of money but dude just the tip, that, that thing is huge, man, that everyone loves, that Tomei, ooh! Uh, one more box, what, the, what, is, what is in this? What is in this box? Silencers, exhaust hangers. Well, that absolutely sucked. Uh, I got the, not installing the cat back, but I was messing with the exhaust hangers to try to get it to sit where I wanted absolutely decimated my hand and ripped off an entire callus um yeah that hurt but it, I, while i was like chilling i went and got a miter saw so i'm gonna get that up pipe cut on our engine so that way i can start like figuring out piping and where i want the turbo to sit and all that stuff uh the cat back's pretty much on i'll show you that real quick and we'll get to cutting some pipe but damn dude don't get your finger or your hands caught in pliers dude that woohoo 
especially when you're squeezing like full chooch. But I think I got the Tome sitting where I want for the most part, like poking out wise. I don't want it crazy past the bumper. I still need to like, it's a little loosey goosey at the moment because there's no, it's not connected. I think I'm gonna buy another one of these hanger guys to hold the muffler up, but I think I'll put it up here also so that way it's got two. Um, so that way it's just a little tighter. I got the springs on over here and whatnot. I have this clamp tightened down. Uh, like I said, I do not have the rest of the cat back put on yet, but it looks good. Looks real good. Uh, I just want to get another one of these. I don't like how I only have one. Probably get a second one. Hang it up to that hanger right there just to keep it from being like super loosey goosey like that. This is real loose. Like I get once it's like fully mounted up and everything, it'll sit like up there and whatnot and be like nice and tight and sit where I want it to. So let me read the instructions on how to use this thing so I don't lose a finger in conjunction to losing a callus. Uh, we'll pop this up pipe off, cut it where I marked it. And then we should be good to start mocking up things for a rotated kit, assuming that this piping diameter is the same as what I bought, which I hope it is. If not, we're gonna have to build that pipe from scratch. Oh, this is multiple layers of tubing and not just what? Tomei uses multiple tubes inside of the pipes? What is it? Can I get that one out? Like what? What? All right guys, it's the next morning. I had to go inside last night. Like my, I could not get my hand to stop bleeding. Like just for a frame of reference, if you look at your hand, like one of your calluses, literally all of the skin is gone. And it's just flesh right there and it just would not stop. So we good now, that's all that matters, but um, so the Tomei idea, just it's not gonna work. There's an up pipe inside of the up pipe on Tomei's for some reason. I don't know why they do that, but for some reason they do. So uh, that Tomei unequal length is for sale. I guess I'm not running the unequal length. I hopped on Killer Bee's website last night. I ordered the Killer Bee Holy Header with the DIY rotated up pipe. It'll just be a little bit easier. It's already pre-bent, pre-mandrel pre pre bent 321 stainless steel. So it'll work just fine, uh, especially with our turbo setup. So perfect. Now we just gotta wait for that to come in. But while we continue waiting for parts to come in, we're gonna make some fuel lines for the WRX, at least on the feed side of the engine. So that way all the feed's done, then we just gotta do the return side once the engine is actually in the car. So let me show you what we're doing real quick. I'm gonna make these lines and we can jump over, keep doing some other stuff. Now keep in mind this intake manifold is also not staying on the car. It's just on here temporarily to keep crap from going inside of the engine. Uh, but for us, so we have a dash six return back here and a dash six or dash eight feed here. So. The feed's gonna go from the fuel filter to this Y, and then Y off to both sides of the fuel rail, and then I'll secure that down to the engine itself. So we've got 190 coming off right here, 190 coming off right here. Now I know this question's gonna come up, Tanner, you have TGV, TGV deletes and you're tuning with them. Um, I'm just going to have to suffer with check engine lights. I'll be totally fine, I can live, I can survive. Um, you, there's no way in hell you're gonna fit a dash eight feed line on with TGVs. It's just, it's not gonna happen. You could squeeze by with a dash six, but for what I'm doing, Dash eight, I have no choice but to use TGV delete. So I'm just gonna have to live with the check engine lights and have a really rough cold start every time I start up the WRX. It's not gonna be the end of the world. It'll be for maybe a couple of minutes. Then once everything warms up and stabilizes um, and the butterfly valves, butterfly valves that would be there shouldn't affect airflow anymore. It should be totally fine. So it's gonna suck, but we'll make it work. Let's jump over. Let's start making some feed lines for our fuel rails. And then when uh, we should be Gucci, we can, we can be Gucci gang and have a fuel feed done on this. Feed line's done on here. As you guys can see, we got one feed line coming off, going around back here to the Y fitting, which I'll put a P clip right here to the top of the block, just to keep that guy there. Now there's two ways to run fuel lines in a Subaru or in a dual fuel rail type of setup like this. You can do in series or parallel. We do parallel. This is like parallels when the feed comes up, it Ys off like that does goes to each side of the fuel rail, feeds each rail independently, and then both of the returns would go to the fuel pressure regulator. If you have in series, it would come straight from the feed into like one rail here, come out. This rail would then just attach to that rail, and then the end of that rail would go back up to the fuel pressure regulator. So I prefer parallel versus series. I've never used series. I just don't like the idea of giving one rail more fuel than the other. I mean, it shouldn't matter once it's pressurized, it's pressurized. I just like this idea a little bit better. And speaking of fuel, dude, we got some big boy injectors in from Fuel Injector Clinic. Now, I was looking, when I came to like buying injectors for 
the blue brew. We're about to swing over to the shop so I can go drop these off because I don't like leaving uh, injectors over here. This is the FIC. So FIC, FIC specifically made this injector for us. Uh, not for us, but they'll make injectors for you depending on like what size you need, the O-rings and whatnot and everything. And this is one of my old injectors. So as you guys can see, we have FIC on the left and injector dynamics on the right they look damn near identical in size which is literally perfect so the new ones are 2150 cc versus the old ones being 1300 so the new injectors will definitely definitely get us to the power that we want um these injectors will do 1200 wheel horsepower on e85 for us uh, i was looking because with injector dynamics it's either you go with 1700s or 2600s 2600s if i ever want to drive the car and pump gas again it's just going to make it so annoying to drive that the idle is going to be all over the place it's going to be rich all the time and it's just going to smell like fuel it's going to waste more fuel than needed so 2150s on a fuel injector calculator put us right where we wanted at around 1200 wheel horsepower so that'll be fucking perfect for what we're doing now because i haven't fully built built out the harness yet for the blue brew um i can steal the iWire upgraded injector clips that i got for this engine which uses injector dynamics injectors and i'm just going to cut them and splice them directly to the harness because i've already cut into that harness once for the ids before but i, I would rather use these ones ones from iWire because these FIC ones use a different type of electrical connector which thankfully they provide pigtails so that way we can just wire them directly to our new engine harness on the STI so sick I gotta go to the shop anyways go get those plugs and go drop these off because whenever it comes to the STI stuff I want to leave all the STI stuff at the at the shop just leave them there so sick made it back down I got the propane heater going right now to try to warm up the car I'm in like this weird spot where there's not a ton I can do on the WRX till I get my valve buckets in which all of them have shipped at this point with the exception of three. So I'm just waiting on these three to ship out. So I'm trying to like knock out like the little stuff, like the random fuel lines, the random stuff on the engine that I can do. I've got like the electrical guys plugged in there. I've got them snipped up. So at this point, I'm sure you guys have seen in the background, I'm taking the wrap off the WRX. So I guess I'll keep working on that. I need to do it anyway. So I'm probably not gonna get it all off right now, but I can at least get more of it off. So let's turn the WRX back to silver. I can only do so much wrap removal before I lose my mind. That's pretty decent progress. Rear bumper's pretty much done. Uh, doors, I just gotta take off the handles and the trim pieces to be able to get all these little pieces out. Uh, fender's pretty much done aside from that. It's just, dude, this stuff, it just takes so long to take wrap off. It's a love-hate thing. I don't mind putting it on, but taking it off really sucks. But like I said, oh my God, there we go. Like I said, I'm just kinda in this weird limbo where I can't really do much. Once we get our Killer Bee manifold nut pipe, I can fabricate the up pipe for the turbo. That new setup with everything the car should do, I don't know, 650, 700 maybe. I'm thinking, honestly, I'm thinking right around 650 wheels, what it's gonna make on Josh's Mustang dyno, um, which is pretty good. For a daily driver, I'm pretty happy with that. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys on this one. So, like I said, just kinda in this weird limbo spot waiting for parts to show up, but. If you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, sign, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be, put it in one of these corners. No idea which one quite yet, but with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies. Woo!